Hey guys, the footage you're about to see is done by a professional. I've been doing this for over 25 years. This footage is for entertainment value only. Please do not try this at home. So, you want to shoot fast, huh? <laughs> I'm finally waking up today. <laughs> a lot of people ask me, well, how do I get to the next level? Well. You get to the next level by being the first one on the range and the last one to leave. Hi, I'm Jerry Mitchellack and welcome to this week's episode of Shoot Fast. The feature of this week is the Rhino Revolver. It's made by Chiappa. This is actually the white Rhino, which means it's the stainless steel version of it. It's a six inch, it has a Picatinny rail top and bottom. I've got a Vortex Razor red dot on it, just like I use on my competition gun. It's a six shot. This is a 38 357 Magnum. Some of the features on this revolver that makes it different than most any other revolver in the world. Of course, the barrel is on the bottom. So this is what separates it from every other thing that you see that has a cylinder on it. Uh, something you want to be careful of too is the cylinder gap is on the bottom. So it will burn you pretty quick. Also, it has a hexagonal cylinder. It has an alloy frame with a steel insert on the breech face. It has fiber optic sights. It has a ball detent lock up on the crane. It also has a false hammer. So if you want to cock it single action, you reach up here and cock it. And you see the little cocking indicator comes up on the top, a little red piece of plastic. And that tells you that it is cocked and ready to fire. And if you want to, you can go ahead and dry fire it single action. The cylinder release is here up on the top by the, by, the, uh, by the strong hand thumb. Pull it down to the rear, open the cylinder. It has an ejecting rod just like the Smith & Wesson and all, all the other revolvers. It's a pretty futuristic gun. We've had a lot of requests to, to actually bring this out on the range and fire it. I actually won this gun at Steel Challenge a few years ago in a side match. So I've had it in a box since then. So we're going to take it out and actually run with it. One of the things that is apparent to me uh, is the grip angle. It has a pretty radical grip angle so when you hold it you have to really lock your wrist over center a lot more than you do with any other revolver. It's even more than a Glock pistol so uh, it's kind of that European made wrist angle so it's totally different than what I'm accustomed to but that's what makes it a different revolver. Give you some ideas of the differences between this Chiapa and my Smith & Wesson competition gun it's also a six inch gun. It's a stainless steel end frame. It's an eight shot 38 special 357 Magnum. Same uh, Vortex Razor red dot. This one's quad reported by Magnaport. This one has a Hogue grip on it. Comes off the X frame Smith & Wesson's. Mine has a serrated narrow trigger and that's another big difference between the two handguns. Might be hard to see it but I use the standard Smith & Wesson serrated trigger which is 275 thousandths wide. This Chiapa uh, trigger looks to be really close to a half inch wide and it's smooth. The other thing that's apparent to me as a revolver enthusiast is it has a relatively short trigger pull. But the, the, wide, the wideness of the trigger, it, it kind of distracts me from where I'm at on a revolver shooter. So anyway, that's some of the differences. We hope to take them out of the range here shortly. And what we're going to do for ammunition when we go to the range, this is some Hornady ammo that we, we acquired through Cheaper Than Dirt. It's their 140 grain FTX bullet. And what that means to the shooter is it's a polymer tip bullet. <laughs> okay, let me get this picked up. Okay. Oops. One thing I don't like to do is handle ammunition and guns in the same spot. Let me get these revolvers out of the way. Talk a little bit about ammunition. This is the Hornady 140 grain flex tip. as the polymer Spitzer style bullet. Uh, they advertise it at 1440 feet a second. I've shot it previous to this uh, adventure and it shoots extremely accurate and it's extremely powerful. So I'm looking forward to getting this out on the range and getting that Chiapa out and uh, giving it a good run. Finally made it out to the range. I've got that Chiapa Rhino Revolver, 38 Special, 357 Magnum. I've got six rounds of 38 Special. So we're going to go ahead and load it up. 
and shoot six on one piece of steel just get a time reference for it and uh, let's see what it what it sounds like six on one all right let's take a look at it here uh, let's go through the whole numbers here 82 at a 22, a 22, a 19, a 21, 19. So, 82 from 185 is a 1.0 three hundredths of a second to fire six rounds on target with this revolver. So, just give you an idea what it sounds like. It's quite different for me to shoot this revolver. The trigger action, the way it recoils, is a little bit different. The way I have to hold it is totally different. So. All in a nutshell, it's just a totally different experience of what I'm accustomed to, but we're getting six rounds on target and hair over a second. Alright guys, we managed to put six rounds on one target in about a second. So let's take it to the next level, see if we can put two shots on each of the three targets in about a second here. So we've got the same 38 special ammo, got it all loaded up, we'll go left to right, here we go, left to right, two on each. Alright, total time was a 193. First shot was a 78, so we didn't make our one second time here. Our splits were averaging about a 20, about a, ooh, about a 20, 2100 split there. So as you can see, I was kind of high on the target. One thing about this revolver, it has a very distinct grip angle. So if you don't lock your wrist way over center, it has a tendency to shoot high. So I was a little bit high. Anyway, we got the rounds on target. As you can tell by the shot placement on those targets, I need to lock my wrist way down on this run, so... The grip angle on this revolver is like no other gun I've ever fired, so I'm going to have to really break my wrist over center to get the, uh, the barrel to look where actually my eye is looking, so... Let's do that again. Left to right, two on each. Here we go. bit better. I had to think more about what I was doing. Total time of a 175, first shot of 63. So that's one, about a second and a tenth there to fire six rounds on target. So totally different grip angle, something different. So there it is, six on target. I want to show you something guys, I got lucky, I just fired 12 rounds on my very first round, I managed to burn my thumb. Remember what we talked about in the intro, about getting that thumb out from the cylinder gap? The barrel's on the bottom, not on the top. This small grip in my large hands, I had enough thumb here to where it actually got out in front of the cylinder. And I was real lucky, it was just 38 special and nothing happened. If that would have been a 357 Magnum, it would have split my thumb open, so. Be careful when you do this, guys, to lock your thumbs over and not get out in front of the cylinder like I did. I just got stupid there in a moment of passion. What can I say? Having fun on the range. Okay, guys, we shot the multiple targets. Got my trusty plate right here. Got my 38 Special Ammo. I got to remember to get my thumb out of the way, break my wrist over center. Let's see if we can run a plate rack in. Here we go, left to right. One plate rack. Ah! Not too bad. We averaged about a 27, about a 2600 split there. First shot was a 122. Last shot was a 256. So that was a one, 134. Yeah, about a 134 for six rounds on target. Plate rack, not bad, not bad. Didn't, did, didn't burn my thumb.
Okay guys, I'm about 50 rounds into, into practice here, so uh, to make this a little bit harder, we're going to shoot the same 38 Special. We're going to go left target, right target, left target, right target. Do some transition drills, see if I can remember to keep my wrist in the right angle here. Left, right, left, right. Let's see what it looks like. Here we go. Not too bad, not too bad, not too bad. Let's see what we averaged here, 40, 30, yeah, we probably averaged about 32 hundredths on that. So total time was a 332, first shot was a 139. A little bit under two seconds to do a little razzle dazzle there on the plate rack. Not too bad, I'm starting to get the hang of this wrist angle here, so it's quite different for me, so. Okay, I've got the white rhino, got a plate rack, got 38 special ammo. Let's just see if we can do this thing strong hand only. It's going to be hard for me to remember the, the wrist angle here, so uh, first shot might not be up to speed. Let's see what we can do here. We'll go left to right. Here we go. Hmm, not too bad, not too bad, not too bad. Let's take a look at that, see what we did. 308, 109, so it's two seconds. A two second plate rack, strong hand only, so not bad, not bad. The white rhino is making noise. Let's try to do something else. Alright guys, we're tearing it up strong hand, so we're going to go straight into something harder. We're going to go weak hand unsupported. Got my favorite 38 special ammo here. I'm going to really have to think 10 times as hard here to keep this thing pointed in the right direction. Alright, here we go. Weak hand only, left to right. Missed them. <laughs> oh well. We'll try it again. Okay, I got a little bit of a hack going. What can I say? I'm human. I'm going to try it again. We're going to put that weak hand out there. We're going to work for it. We're going to study. We're going to work. We're going to make it happen. Here we go. We can only. Here we go. And there it is. The white rhino. We can unsupport it. Aha, uh -huh. yes, yes, yes. Four seconds, one second first shot, exactly three seconds. I was trying to I was trying to pace that to make it actually three seconds, so that's right on the money. What can I say? Okay guys, the weak hand went pretty good. We'll step over to the dueling tree here. We're going to start on the bottom left, go to the right, work our way to the top. Key here is to keep the gun running, keep the trigger in cycle, and do not miss. Let's go and see what this looks like. Start on the bottom left. Here we go. Not too bad, not too bad. Let's take a look at it. Total time of a 262 and a first shot of a 77. So we're running about a 37, no, about a 30, a 3500 split there. So not too bad.
So we've tried just about everything with this Chiapa, so we're going to go ahead and try to shoot it upside down with the little finger. I'm going to try to do this as fast as I can. No promises here. Uh, first time on the range with it. Let's see what, uh, what it looks like. Woo. All right, here we go. That's quite different. All right. Woo. <laughs> Let's try that again. Here we go. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> wow. That's as good as it gets, guys. <laughs> Wow, that wrist angle upside down was bad. It was it had me guessing. All right, we have, we average about a 50 two hundredths of a second per shot. Not a bad group once I found the dot, but uh, it was totally different. We're going to take this to the next level, and the way we're going to do that, we've got some 357 Magnum ammunition. This is some Hornady 140 grain FTX ammunition. It's rated at 1,440 feet a second. It's 140 grain with a polymer tip. We've shot these before. They're extremely accurate. They're also very fast. So we've got our test bottles down there. What I want you to be aware of and what I want you to look at is that bottle in the middle is frozen so we're going to start on the left target and come on across as fast as we can hit them and I want you to kind of just watch and see what has the best effect if the frozen bottle or the ones with just the uh, the standard cola in it works the same so we're going to go left to right and see what they see how they respond to this Hornady flex tip ammunition alright left to right here we go That's pretty good stuff, guys. <laughs> wow. I think that frozen bottle worked pretty good. It had a good effect. Let's go down and take a look at it. Hmm. Nothing like the smell of a cheap soft drink. <laughs> this one here caught it pretty good. It flipped it all the way around. That's a couple of inches off the bottom. The frozen one worked pretty good. It split it top to bottom. This one didn't go too bad either. And I hit this one right on the bottom edge. I got a little jumpy, so all of them had good effect though. We had a good a good radius on the cola here. So uh, all in all, the Hornady ammunition and the white rhino proved to be no match for a cheap two liter bottle. Now guys, this is the fun part of the whole program right here. We're going to blow some stuff up. What I have for you today is two cans of shave cream and two cans of corn. The difference is that left can of corn is cream corn and the other can is just standard corn. So we're going to see which one pops the best. So we're going to start with that can of cream corn. It's going to be the second one from the left. I've got that Hornady 140 grain flex tip ammunition. As you can see from the two liter bottles, it works pretty good. So let's go ahead and shoot that second can from the left, that can of cream corn, and see how effective it is on that. And we'll take it to the next one. Here we go. Cream corn does not work good. <laughs> Let's shoot the other can of corn on the right, that second one from the right. Let's see what that looks like. Wow. 
Wow, what a dud. Let's go look at it. <laughs> My zero is way off here, so what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm hitting right on the bottom. I'm going to aim up a little bit higher here, and uh, that's what you get for not sighting in. Okay, let's try that again. Let's see if we can finish up that one can of corn there. All right, let's see if we can finish it up. I'm aiming a good bit higher. That was a little bit better effect, but I know the shave cream has to work better, so... Let's see, let's get some ammo lined up here. Alright. Let's shoot that can on the left. Can of shave cream on the left. Try to punch him right in the middle here. Ah, I found the sweet spot. I was hitting way low, so I had to pick my aim up a little bit here. As you can saw, as you as you can saw, as you can see, see, that was pretty exciting. Let's shoot that one on the right. Let's go ahead and touch him off. Always a good experience with shave cream. So there you have it, guys. The white rhino. Okay guys, I gotta redeem myself on these cans of corn. I hit them way on the bottom. My point of impact has shifted. I don't know what ha what this ammunition from the 38 Specials or what's going on here, but I know where to aim now. So I've got my volunteer can of corn and I know what to do with it. So I have to redeem myself on this shot. Let's go ahead and uh, pop that can. Here we go. Now there was a center shot. A lot better. <laughs> you want to go down and take a look at what we just did here? Okay. This corn went a lot better. I actually hit him just a little bit a little bit off the bottom. So I was hitting them a little bit low all the way across the board. This one also touched it right on the bottom. The cream corn doesn't work as good. The regular corn is a lot better. As you can see the uh, the shave cream both of the cans have disappeared so they always go good. So the 140 grain Hornady round uh, seems to work really neat to open cans. What can I say? If you, I know you guys seen me do this before. One thing I try to look for is the radial dispersion. So I've got a kernel of corn right here. There's one here. And there's a couple of them back here. Let's see, there's one here. And there's one here. So if we actually step it off, uh, let's see where we are. Let's see how far we are here. One, two, three, four. We're about 18 yards from the point of impact, so we actually had the debris go 18 yards from the from the can. So that's that's pretty good performance out of a 357 Magnum. So what do you think, guys? I've been shooting revolvers for 30 years. 
This is a totally different experience. Uh, the point, the, the limitation on the grip, the trigger pull, the sights, everything was different. So I had to do a little on the job training there. All in all, it performed pretty good. It's, uh, it's a very futuristic handgun. It was the most requested revolver that we've had in a long time. So and that's something else I'd like to bring up to you guys. I'd like to invite you to subscribe to the MitchLack.com YouTube channel and post what you'd like to see us do next. We've got a couple of really neat projects coming. We've got a Barrett semi-auto 50 caliber rifle. We've got a couple of Desert Eagles in different calibers. We've got the uh, Bushmaster ACR and an FN SCAR. So this was a very much requested uh, shooting event for you guys. So if you would just take a little time and uh, tell us what you'd like to see next. We've got all these different options. So we'd, we would like some input. Thank you. We're gonna got a problem with wasp. So we'll I never did like wasp. <laughs> Don't do this at home. <laughs> there it is. Taken care of. <laughs>